what to expect after a catheter ablation procedure for atrial fibrillation. Now, remember, a catheter ablation procedure for atrial fibrillation is a procedure where we're actually trying to get rid of the AFib cells from the inside. This is different from medication treatments, such as medicines that just slow your heart rate down so you notice your AFib less, but it's still there, or trying to put the AFib cells to sleep with a stronger antiarrhythmic drug that doesn't get rid of your AFib cells and doesn't keep your AFib cells from growing more, but just masks it or keeps it temporarily asleep until it can't mask it any longer. Both are very good treatment options, but if you've chosen to do an atrial fibrillation ablation to try to reverse the process, to try to get rid of AFib cells so that they take a much longer time to grow back because it's not a permanent cure, but it can get rid of it for years, this is what we are trying to do and this is what you can expect. Now remember, we are electricians, not plumbers. So if you come for the procedure, we are going to map inside your heart. This is not the same thing as a heart catheterization. A left heart catheterization or cardiac catheterization is a procedure that our plumber colleagues or interventional cardiologists use to actually shoot dye into your heart arteries, look for blockages, and then try to open them up. It may feel very similar, but it is a completely different procedure from an atrial fibrillation ablation. We do still poke little holes into your leg vessels. We go into the veins, not the arteries. They go into the arteries, which is the plumbing system. That's the bright blood that spurts out like a pump, the arterial blood. We go into the veins. That's the dark blood that dribbles out like after a blood draw or after giving labs or after an IV line placement because it doesn't really matter which system we go up, the arterial plumbing system or the venous deoxygenated blood system. We're just trying to get our electrical wires into the heart to sense electricity. So prior to the procedure, you are gonna do some blood work as usual, but when we actually do the procedure, we poke little holes into the leg veins and depending on how many catheters we need to put up, we put little spaghetti-like wires up the leg veins into your heart and these little wires actually touch the walls of your heart. They don't hurt your heart, they're very floppy, they're like long pieces of spaghetti, and when they come out of your leg veins, they are hooked up to an advanced computer system that actually allows us to sense the electricity everywhere those little wires are touching. Every single wall those little wires are touching. So depending on how many little wires are put up, sometimes we can see 20 or 30 separate channels of electricity from multiple walls of your heart, all simultaneously in real time. We really can see how the electricity is flowing. And then we try to map out where these abnormal AFib cells or sources or triggers are, and then we try to get rid of it with an ablation catheter. And the ablation catheter is a catheter with a metal tip that goes up the same way under x-ray into your heart. And then there's little knobs on the handle. And as we turn the little knobs, the tip kind of bends, torques, moves around, and we are getting it to touch the wall of the heart where we believe there are some sources of atrial fibrillation. And then we keep it in that area and we turn the catheter on and it's attached to an energy source. And the energy source, whether you're talking about the standard cauterization or freezing, or you talk about the newest energy source, pulsed field ablation, where we're using pulses of electricity or electromagnetic fields to destroy the cells, doesn't matter. We are trying to get rid of the AFib cells in little clusters, little by little, from different areas of your heart, trying to get rid of the problem at its source. Now, expect this procedure to be done mostly under general anesthesia. We usually cannot have you squirming around even if you're asleep, so we oftentimes will make you so asleep where we are breathing for you, where you're so asleep you're not breathing on your own. We put a little tube down to breathe for you, so you have to be completely out, and the procedure will take anywhere from one to four hours depending on the difficulty and complexity of your case and also who's doing it and what specific energy source they're using but the procedure itself is generally done under general anesthesia and can take anywhere from one to four hours where you are on a tiny little table, a hard metal table, under general anesthesia for that period of time. When we are done and you wake up, usually you have to lay flat for several hours because you do have little holes in your leg vessels that we don't want to bleed. These are venous holes, not arterial holes, so there is less chance of bleeding because the venous system, of course, is the tiny blood that dribbles out, not the blood that spurts out like a pump, like an artery, but you do need to stay flat for several hours. And when you finally get up, usually depending on how difficult the procedure was and how long you were under, you may be able to leave later that day or by the next morning. Now, everyone's reaction to general anesthesia is different. The older you are in general, the more time it's gonna take to bounce back from that. So there are risks with the general anesthesia itself separate from what we do from the ablation. 
And so the older you are, the longer it may take to bounce back from that, the longer it may take to get the anesthetics out of your system, the younger you are, the less it will affect you. But generally speaking, do expect to feel some grogginess afterwards. And if you did go under general anesthesia, and if we did breathe for you during the procedure with a little tube down your throat, you can often experience some scratchiness in your throat because that's just from the two. And you, sometimes people complain about some back pain because they were laying on a hard flat table for a couple hours. So all of these things are things to watch out for. If you do have chronic back issues, that is something you have to be careful with because you may have more back issues temporarily afterwards. It could exacerbate that, having you lay on your back for several hours on a hard flat table. But unfortunately, just let your doctor know about that and you can try to control that with pain medicines. Now, when you go home, generally just take it easy. We usually ask people to not do any strenuous activities for at least a few days, maybe five to seven days, no exercising for a week, no strenuous heavy lifting, maybe just holding things up to five to 10 pounds. Please don't go to the gym. You can take a shower, but try not to submerge those little holes for five or six days until they seal. And it is very common to have some bruising and some soreness for a week or two in your groin area, but that's usually nothing serious and usually goes away. Now, if you were to develop high fevers or start coughing up sputum, it could rarely mean that there might be a issue with like a pneumonia or some other issue. Obviously, let your doctor know, but generally speaking, that's not very common and most people do very well. In terms of discomfort, usually other than what happens in your groin, there's not usually a lot of discomfort. Sometimes with the radio frequency or cauterization, depending on how extensive the ablation is, sometimes patients will say they feel a chest pressure or some pain in their chest for a day or two, it usually goes away with the other modalities that may be a little bit less. So generally speaking, it's not terribly difficult to recuperate from atrial fibrillation ablation procedure. This is not open heart surgery. We're not cracking your chest open. This is all done non-invasively through your leg veins. But for that first couple weeks afterwards, you do have to be careful and take it a little bit easy. Now, if you use the radio frequency catheter, plus some of the other modalities, there is fluid that you will get during the procedure. The radio frequency catheter actually gives some fluid on its own. The others don't, but the longer you are on the table and the longer the procedure goes, you get fluids just from the IV lines and also from the anesthetics. And so sometimes people will feel some shortness of breath afterwards if they've gotten some fluids. It's almost like drinking several liters worth of fluid and now you feel kind of bloated or you feel like you have some extra water weight. Usually that's nothing super serious, but if you have a weaker than normal heart or you got a lot of fluid, sometimes it is necessary to give you a medication called a diuretic to pee out some of that extra fluid, but it, so over the course of several days so that you get back to where you were. It's usually nothing super dangerous or life-threatening, but that is something that can definitely happen and do keep an eye out for that. Then after the procedure, your doctor or electrophysiologist should be monitoring you carefully to not only make sure that there were no complications directly from the procedure itself, but that these other things are resolving and that you're doing well. But also remember, it can take up to three to four months to see the full result of the ablation procedure. It's not an instantaneous thing. It's not as if you did it yesterday and starting tomorrow, you should have nothing. Ablation is not all or nothing. That is a myth. No, it's like putting out a giant force fire. The more you have to do, the more skill is necessary, whether or not the physician has the skill to get rid of everything or not. And even if they did get rid of a lot or everything in there, it could take up to three to four months for those AFib cells to actually die off. It's not always instantaneous. Sometimes people will have AFib waking up for the first month and then it could be less and by the third or fourth month, it might be gone. Now, nothing more is going to die off from what the physician did after about three or four months. So any AFib that wakes up past that point is something that has survived the procedure. But up until that point, it is too early to say. So please do not just have the procedure done and then starting the next day say, I'm cured and then just disappear. That would not be a good idea. So do give it some time, do be monitored carefully, but generally speaking, ablation being a non-invasive procedure is usually tolerated quite well.